Hello friends, in the last two videos, we started discussing about ethylene phytohormone. We discuss about its introduction, then its chemical nature and structure, then its production in plants and also physiological effects of ethylene. We also discuss about biosynthesis of ethylene in plants. You can refer my videos, the link is given in the description box. In this video, we are going to discuss about ethylene signaling pathway. We know that ethylene is a gaseous hormone that is responsible for promoting germination of seeds, fruit ripening, opening of flowers, abscission of leaves and stress responses. To trigger ethylene responses or its physiological effects, it needs to be perceived and transduced through a signal transduction pathway. In this video, we will discuss about the signaling pathway. So first of all, key components of ethylene signaling pathway. First is ligand, which is signaling molecule. Here it is ethylene. Second is transcription factor. Here it is EIN3, ethylene insensitive protein 3. Third is receptor, which binds with ligand. Here it is ETR1, ethylene response 1. It is dimeric transmembrane protein, which function as histidine kinases. Extracellular domain contains a copper ion that binds to ethylene and an intracellular histidine kinase domain is present. So now how ethylene signaling takes place? There are two situations. First when ethylene is absent, second when ethylene is present. Let us see them one by one. So first when ethylene is absent, CTR1 constitutive triple response 1 associate with ETR1 receptor towards its cytosolic domain which is histidine kinase. Then autophosphorylation of histidine kinase domain of receptor takes place. This is followed by phosphorylation of CTR1. This CTR1 then phosphorylates EIN2 protein Phosphorylation of EIN2 protein activates ETP1, which is ubiquitin ligase. Then ETP1 associates with EIN2 and leads to its polyubiquitination, that is, tags it with polyubiquitin. This polyubiquitination is followed by proteasomal degradation of this EIN2 by 26 as proteasome. Also, in the nucleus, EIN3 is degraded by F-box protein. EIN3 binds with F-box protein and it is followed by polyubiquitination of EIN3 by E2, which is ligase. This polyubiquitination is followed by 26S proteasomal degradation of EIN3. Hence, EIN3 which is transcription factor does not bind with regulatory region of ethylene response gene. Hence no transcription takes place therefore no ethylene responses or physiological effects of ethylene is seen in plants. Now let us understand this with the help of this diagram. This is in the absence of ethylene. ETR1 which is receptor and EIN2. These are present in the membrane of endoplasmic reticulum. Copper ion is present. CTR1 comes and binds with the cytosolic domain of this receptor, which leads to autophosphorylation of histidine kinase of ETR1, which is followed by phosphorylation of CTR1. Then this CTR1 phosphorylates EIN2. This phosphorylation of EIN2 activates ETP1 which is ligase. ETP1 comes and binds with EIN2 and leads to polyubiquitination of EIN2. 
polyubiquitination of EIN2 is followed by proteasomal degradation of EIN2 by 26 as proteasome. In the nucleus, this EIN3 which is transcription factor comes and binds with F-box protein which consists of EBF, Qlene and E2. This E2 is ligase. This E2 then tags EIN3 with polyubiquitin that is leads to polyubiquitination of EIN3. This is followed by proteasomal degradation of EIN3 by 26S proteasome. So now this EIN3 transcription factor is degraded. Hence, it does not comes and binds with the regulatory region of ethylene response genes as a result of which no transcription takes place. Now the second situation when ethylene is present. Ethylene binds to the receptor ETR1. Binding of ethylene results in the conformational change in ETR1 that is ETR1 undergoes conformational changes. So now CTR1 is free. It does not binds with cytosolic domain of ETR1. Hence it interacts with EIN2 and cleaves C-terminal of EIN2. This C-terminal is then transported to the nucleus and binds with F-box protein. Hence, F-box protein is now occupied. So, EIN3 does not bind with F-box protein as a result of which no degradation of EIN3 takes place. Hence, this EIN3 binds to the regulatory region of ethylene response gene because it is transcription factor. Therefore, transcription is on. Hence, ethylene responses or effects are seen in plants. Now, let us understand this with the help of the diagram. This is ethylene receptor. In the presence of the ethylene plant hormone, it comes and binds with the receptor which leads to conformational change in the receptor. As a result of which the CTR1 does not bind with it and it causes the cleavage of C-terminal of EIN2. After the cleavage of this C-terminal, it is transferred to nucleus and comes and binds with the F-box protein. Now this F-box protein is occupied. Hence, EIN3, which is the transcription factor, does not binds with it. So it is free and it comes and binds with the regulatory region of ethylene response gene and results in transcription of the genes. This results in ethylene responses or physiological effects of ethylene in plants. So this is all for today's video. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share it and subscribe my channel. Thank you.